Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and tonight we're looking at IKEA's trad-free wireless control outlet, or as everyone else would call it, a smart socket. So this is part of IKEA's uh, trad-free smart home setup, which includes um, lights, a control unit, uh, remote controls, all kinds of things. But the really interesting thing about this is that compared with if you like other mainstream products on the market, the trad-free smart socket is really competitively priced. It's just £9 in the UK for this. If you want to compare that with uh, Samsung SmartThings, it's over £40. Now, they're not, as we'll see shortly, they're not really directly comparable, but there will be a lot of people interested to see whether you can actually pair this up with SmartThings. And the short answer is you can. So I'm going to take you through the process of that. We'll do the quick unboxing and then we'll take uh, a look at the uh, how to pair it with smart things and what you can then do with it. Okay, so as it says in the box, this is a Zigbee device, so it should be easy enough to get paired up. But uh, as I've, I've already tried it with one other one, uh, so I know that it's not quite as straightforward as you might think. So in the box, you basically get the the smart socket or the wireless control unit, as they say, uh, and then you've got uh, two bits of pin, bits of bump. That's a, uh, English, it's almost where we need to go. Okay, it just tells you how to pair it. Um, oh, there's pairing. So you've got red lights and there's a little little socket here, I think. Oh, sorry. Yep, if you need to reset the device, you push a pin in the pinhole. Oops, you can't see it. You, you push a pin in the pinhole for about five seconds. Hopefully we won't need to do that. And then the other bit of paper. What have we got here? Oh, a bit more detail on it. Okay, so it's pairing with other devices and the, the, the trunk, I think. Oh, look, well, not, not really interested in that. So let's take a look at the control unit itself and see if we can get it paired up with smart things. Okay, so the control unit, um, it's, oh, why am I pointing control unit? The, the smart socket or the wireless control outlet uh, it, it's as you can say it's white it's a hard plastic maximum 13 amps it says on here though I should emphasize this is only for primarily a resistive load it's not rated for inductive load so don't go using this on your on your washing machine or anything like that that has a high motor load interestingly there is no um, if you like uh, auxiliary button so you can only turn the socket on and off via Zigbee, you can't press a button on the top to turn it on and off. So I think that's you know that's one thing where say the smart things plug, it has an extra button on the side, so that if you do need to turn a socket on and you don't have your smartphone handy, you can just press the button and away you go. Okay, so let's um, let's see if we can get this paired up with smart things. Doesn't I mean there's not much else to say. It's a UK socket. There we go. Okay, now, what I do know from doing this already, you have to get this really close to the SmartThings hub before it will pair. So I'm gonna to have to kind of step away from here because helpfully my uh, Samsung hub is in my roof space. So I have to kind of go and do this out of sight. And then, but what I will do is I will leave my uh, smartphone running so we can see the connection happening. Okay, so here's smartphone so what we're going to do is we are going to add a thing and hopefully this works okay okay so you saw the thing appear in the on the screen of the smartphone what I had to do was I had to get the smart socket close to the SmartThings hub and then I had to reset it with a paperclip through the little hole at the bottom and then within a few seconds uh, SmartThings picked up it as a thing. So at the moment it doesn't know what it is, it just sees it as a, as a, a Zigbee thing. So I'm just going to save it as a thing and if we look at it in here, I should be up here where it's thing gone just thing there. So at the moment it's unknown and you can't really do anything with it. 
And actually what we now need to do is to go on to the SmartThings IDE and change the type of the device over to being unknown to being, I think it's a, a Zigbee switch. So we'll do that and I'll just put a couple of screenshots in the video feed so you can see what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the, I'm gonna to go to Google and just simply search for SmartThings ID and that provides me with a quick link through to ID to the ID. I have to log in to with my account, so I'm not going to show you that. Once you've got on to the SmartThings ID, first go to my locations and then choose your hub. And you should quickly get a summary of your hub and various details about its modes, rooms, or the, rather what they call groups and things like that. And once you've actually confirmed that, just go through to My Devices and in the My Devices uh, screen, scroll down until you find Thing. Okay, so once you've found Thing, click on it. And on this screen, you'll see all the details about it. When it was just added, you can just see that it was uh, added very recently. And you'll see here that the um, the type is unknown right up the top. If you now scroll to the bottom, there's a button that says edit, so just hit edit. And now you can, you'll see here that the type defaults to bizarrely a Samsung Smart TV, but you can very easily and then just click in there and choose a new device type. So if you scroll down the list, right at the very bottom, well not, not right at the very bottom, but um, a good way towards the bottom, you'll see a whole load of Zigbee types. So the Zigbee switch and the Zigbee switch power. So just choose Zigbee switch as this, uh, this smart socket doesn't have any um, power monitoring capabilities and then just hit the update button at the bottom. Okay, so that's the thing updated in the IDE. And if we now get the smartphone out, back out again. Okay, and if I just come back out of the thing and to give it a second, and then go back into the thing, it's now converted into, um, converted into a switch. And I don't know if you can hear it, you might be able to, can you hear it clicking away in the background as I tap it? So that's basically it. You've now got your trad-free nine pound smart switch connected up to your, uh, your SmartThings hub and everything is good. The other good thing that I've just checked here is that as a Zigbee switch, the processing of the on off things here is done actually locally. It doesn't need to go off to the internet to process. So there's kind of a bit of a, a win there over things like the, uh, the TP-Link power switches, which are, if you like, probably perhaps better made, but you've obviously got that interface between SmartThings and TP-Link before it can go ahead. So I'm just gonna go and retrieve the smart switch. Okay, and we're back with IKEA's Tradfree Wireless Control Unit, otherwise known as a smart socket. One thing I just need to say before we move on to closing notes is that there is a little white LED that comes up about here when the socket's on, goes off when the socket's off. So hopefully you've seen there that we, it is possible to connect uh, the Tradfree smart socket into a SmartThings uh, environment and as we mentioned earlier it's processed locally there's no going to the cloud uh, because it's a, a Zigbee switch. In terms of buying these at nine pounds they're pretty much a no-brainer uh, compared with the, the 40 odd pounds for an official Samsung smart things smart socket. There is no power monitoring so just bear that in mind and the other thing is that there is as I said before there is no button that allows you to turn the socket on if you don't happen to have your smartphone handy. So I've been using these, or in fact I bought a, this, uh, bought, this is one of two. So I bought the other one a few days ago and I've been using it on my fish tank to turn lights on and off. And I think what I learned from that is that it does work flawlessly. I haven't had any problems at all. 
but I don't think I'd want to use these in places where it's if, if the thing doesn't come on I, and I need it on I can't press the button to turn it on so to give an example I have a Samsung smart socket on my TV and AV setup sometimes it doesn't come on when I return to the house having been out and if it hasn't come on I just really press the button on the back of the on the side of the socket rather than try and go and find my find my uh, smartphone to do it for me um, you know when you've got two kids wanting to get onto their Nintendo the last thing you want to do is go looking for your smartphone which you've left out in the car um, you just want to be able to press that button on the side so I've really been using these these trad free ones in kind of non-essential places and as I say my fish tank lights qualifies as a, a non-essential place uh, and I've had it I've had the lights going on and off um, as I come as people come in and out of the room so the fish light the lights aren't on when there's nobody in the house so look that's about it I think I've shown that it's very easy to get these into the, uh, the smart things ecosystem um, at nine pounds to say they're excellent value for money yes they're not a fantastic looker but uh, um, it, as you say it's, it's only nine pounds and I suspect that if you're anyway halfway creative a bit of uh, a bit of spray paint on this will get this to whatever color you want it to be okay well look this is Andrew signing off for Geek News Central with the Tradfree wireless control outlet thanks very much <laughs>